Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. I wanted to take this chance to talk about the differences between the two Helite trigger options for the Helite airbags. We've got a mechanical trigger right here on my Turtle 2 airbag vest and a, an electronic trigger here on my HMove backpack. Little brief background on both of these products. These are airbags that can save your life while riding a motorcycle. What they do is they've got a CO2 cartridge in here and if you have a crash, they inflate. And then they protect your vital organs and your head and neck area. So you can see CO2 right here. It's quick and easy to replace. Only 30 bucks for a new CO2 cartridge. I think they send you two uh, right off the bat when you purchase one of these. And I know they're a little expensive. This one, I think about 650 bucks. That one, almost a thousand for the electronic trigger. And they do make some other products as well. They've got, um, They've got riding jeans and pants. They've got vests that are pretty cool. I think if I were to go with another product from them, I would get maybe like their leather vest that's got the airbag technology built into it. But if you do want to see dedicated breakdowns of either of these products, check the link below. I've had the Turtle 2 for a few years now, and then I've had the H-Move for a couple of months. And it's given me this opportunity to sort of talk about the advantages and disadvantages to each of the trigger systems. First, let's talk about the mechanical trigger. In order to use the mechanical trigger, you have a rope sort of like this, and it clicks in right here, and then attaches to the bike. In fact, I'll show you over on, which bike do I, I think I have this one. I have it attached to the bike, and if I put it on, then I can get on the bike, ugh, snap it, and it's kind of like wearing a seatbelt. In fact, I find myself riding along and periodically just sort of checking. It's, it's sort of like a little safety line, lifeline seatbelt that you always want to make sure it's plugged in. And then when you get off the bike, you got to make sure that you untether it. Now, fortunately, it takes, I, I, I've heard a few different numbers. I, I need to check the actual documentation. It's something like 60 to 80 pounds worth of force in order to pull and engage this. So enough that if I were flying off the bike, it would yank and inflate the vest. But if I've, I've gotten off my bikes before and simply stood up and had it tug and not pull. So it's a nice little friendly reminder, undo, and then off you go. Now, I had two different motorcycles in my fleet for a while. These are all test bikes right now, but back in Michigan, I had the, my V-Strom and I had a Ninja, two, Ninja 250, and I guess I had my Benelli at the same time also. It was three different bikes. So I ordered a second one of these tethers so that I could have it on multiple bikes. And they're pretty easy to hook on depending on the layout of the bike. So this is kind of how they go. Usually you find a little uh, a piece of metal somewhere in the, the frame of the bike, and then you, you, you snake it through and then it comes right off. So you've got, you've got that and you can put it on a different bike. So something like this BMW F850 GS, it's gonna be super easy. You've got frame right here, simply put it through and then you can adjust the length of it, slide it through there and then you're onto your next bike. But I wanted a few multiple ones. They're, they're cheap and easy to have multiples to have it on multiple bikes. But admittedly, something like this Hayabusa might be a little, t actually it's not a little tougher. Look at that, there's a spot right here could slide this through and then uh, and then have it on this bike as well. But keep in mind that it is going to dangle on the exhaust if you forget to attach it to yourself or if the bike is just sitting there after you get off. So considerations to me, they be made there with the mechanical tether. Some of the advantages to running with the mechanical tether is you never have to worry about keeping it charged. This backpack has a long battery life. I've had it for a few months. Never once has it been dead on me when I've had it out to ride, but also here in beautiful sunny SoCal, it's the middle of January right now, and I'm riding pretty regularly. So I could see someone who is taking a few se few months out of the season off, forgetting to have that charged up when they're ready to go for a ride, but it does seem to charge up pretty quickly. The mechanical, of course, you don't have to worry about any sort of charge level. You simply get on the bike, plug it in, and ride away. So that is one of the pros. Another one of the pros of the mechanical trigger is you always know that it's going to work. I, for the long time owning the electronic trigger, I always had this question in my mind of like, well, I mean, theoretically speaking, I don't know if this is going to work in, in every sort of situation that I'm riding. Because under 15 miles per hour, the mechanical trigger doesn't work because it doesn't want you to accidentally set it off if you're uh, kind of walking around or, or setting the bag down or something like that. So if you get hit at a stoplight, there's a chance that that one's not going to work. 
and also it requires a GPS connection, and e theoretically speaking, if you're going through something like a deep tunnel or a parking structure, there's a chance the electronic one's not going to go off. So with the mechanical, you always know that if you are plugged into the bike, then it is going to engage as soon as you get, oh, maybe about that, that position, depending on how tight you have it, it's going to go off, even at, at low speeds. And then there's the advantage of cost. Across the board, the Helite products cost about $150 to $200 less when you just get the basic mechanical trigger versus the electronic trigger. And then there's also the added benefit of no accidental inflations if you're not riding. The only time I've had my electronic Helite go off is when we were actually in the car. I met my wife Alyssa for lunch and we hopped in her vehicle and I took my backpack off threw it in the back seat of her car and we drove off, but I forgot to turn it off. And then we were coming up to a, a red light and her vehicle were slowing down. The backpack tipped forward on the back seat of the car, went flat down and inflated. It was made this huge gunshot sound of inflation in the back seat of the car. It freaked us both out. It took me a second to realize what had happened. So that is another uh, pro of having the mechanical trigger is that you never have to worry about that happening. So obviously some good reasons to go with a very simple mechanical trigger. But what are some of the reasons you're gonna to wanna to go with the electronic trigger? First of all is convenience. Again, for me, I ride super lucky to get to ride multiple different bikes and be switching bikes very regularly. So admittedly, it's easier for me to not worry about making sure each bike has a, has a tether on it or anything, and instead simply toss on this backpack, press the on button, and then hop on the bike and off I go. And with the fact that I do filming on these motorcycles, it's nice for me to get on and off the bikes without having to constantly be clicking in and clicking back off again. So if I'm getting off, doing some photography and then getting back on the bike, I always know that as long as my backpack is on during the riding day, it's gonna be ready to go. On top of that, there is the consideration that I won't accidentally set the electronic trigger one off by getting off the bike too aggressively. Like I said, it's never happened to me. I've never been clipped onto the bike before and hopped off too aggressively and had it inflate on me. But I could see a situation, say you're riding with a friend and he or she gets into an accident or there's some sort of emergency situation on the road, you stop your bike super quickly and hop off to help them as quickly as possible, forgetting that you're tethered to the bike and then you, <laughs> it, it uh, inflates on you and then you have to run up to your friend like the Michelin man after your chest has just been impacted. Next up, there's also the consideration that you won't accidentally get on the bike and start riding away without hooking this in. I have certainly gone riding with my Turtle 2, and it's just the mechanical trigger. I hop on the bike, um, look, paying attention to all my other stuff, thinking about my route, thinking about the bike, I get riding, and I forget that this is simply dangling along on the street, and I've forgotten to plug it in. Now, typically, you can grab it, plug it into your vest, and along you go, but with the electronic trigger, you just go, Okay, it's on and, you, and you're good and you're rolling. Now I will say that something that Helite could improve upon with the electronic version is they should make the, the beep sound of this turning on louder because oftentimes if I have my bike running and I've got earplugs in my ears, I can't hear whether the, the vest turns on or off. And it's got a little LED light, but it's so subtle to see. In fact, let's see if we can just look in the mirror together. It should be flashing periodically when it's on, but I think it should flash more often. I'd like a nice bright green, there we go. It's very subtle. I don't even know if you saw that. It's very subtle, there you go. It's, I think it's flashing like an orange or uh, yellow or something because my battery is fairly low. And then when I turn it off, you hear that? That's letting me know that the battery needs to be charged up. It, it's, it's a very, very subtle noise. It should be a lot louder. In fact. Let's just experiment. Let's turn on, this is not a loud bike. Oh, I don't have my key to the BMW. Let's turn on the uh, Hayabusa here and we'll see if we can hear the Helite Turtle 2. So this is the inline four idling along. Let's turn on our airbag vest. Did you guys hear that? Because I didn't. Very, very subtle. So they, that's, that's kind of a, I guess a con about having the electronic is it is a little harder to make sure it's activated or deactivated. Now Helite can improve that by simply making a louder beep and a brighter flashing light. With the mechanical, it's, you just all, it's all on you. It's all human error. Are you gonna remember to clip this in? 
Another advantage of the electronic airbag is passengers. I give Alyssa the backpack here, the H move when we're riding along so that she can sit on the back of the bike and I don't have to worry about her being tethered because again, she's just looking around, she's concerned with the scenery. If we stop, take a look at something, I don't want her to have to make sure she pays attention to whether she's clipped in or not. I want her to just be able to always be protected wearing this bag and then simply hop off the bike when it's her time and then on she goes and I can just make sure that her airbag is turned on. And lastly, perhaps this one sounds a little bit silly, but I do think it's a real factor for some people. The electronic trigger looks cooler. It's not exactly a super cool look to have a little uh, strap, a little, little baby strap attached to your bike and attached to your body as you're riding along. I and mean, imagine if you're riding this beautiful 25th anniversary Suzuki Hayabusa here, and you've got a strap right here. I mean, it's subtle. People aren't gonna really notice it too much, but it looks cooler to just be wearing this H-Move backpack with no sort of connection. And then you just look like you're wearing a backpack. You look cool. Or maybe you got the leather vest. And again, it just looks like you're wearing a cool leather jacket rather than something that's all, you know, tethered onto and everything. Now, if I'm riding virtually the opposite of the Hayabusa, the NC750 DCT here from Honda, yeah, I don't mind wearing a bright high vis that's tethered. I, I want everybody to see how practical and, and uh, safe I am. But I, I will admit having the electronic trigger is a little bit of a cooler factor if you're going for that sort of look. So for me, what do I typically go with? If, if, I, had to, uh, if I had to purchase another Keylight product here, which would I be picking? I'd probably go with the mechanical trigger. I, I, I like the, the sense of, of security in knowing that if I were to be rear-ended, I would still be protected. And maybe he like can sort of speak to uh, the, the, the aspect, maybe if I were to be rear-ended, it would, the G sensor would recognize the amount of force and it would still inflate on the electronic trigger. I don't know for sure, but I know for 100% fact, if I get hit and thrown off from the back using the mechanical trigger, it's going to go off. So between that, a little bit of lower cost, since these things are already pretty expensive as they are, and, uh, and just the simplicity, I would probably go with the mechanical, but admittedly, I do find myself grabbing the electronic trigger backpack pretty regularly, but I think that's a little bit more due to the form factor of this H-Move backpack rather than, uh, rather than the, the trigger method. So I think my perfect T-Lite product would be a mechanical trigger, uh, high, relatively high visibility, maybe not quite as obnoxious as this one, but close. Close, a little bit of high vis, and uh, either the H-Move backpack or um, one of their cool vests. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you narrow down uh, what your priorities are in terms of your safety and, and your airbag here. But either way, if you ride and you care about being alive for yourself or for loved ones, highly recommend checking these Helite products out. And you can save 10%, which is a pretty significant amount, by using the code Daily Motor over at their website. Daily Motor, no spaces. It'll be linked down below. Buy yourself some Heat Light products. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, ride on. Mm -hmm.